Well, I decided to add one more segment to the rigid heddle weaving. I had three sections, but now I have the fourth one. As you can see, I'm just about at warp's end and I wanted to talk a little bit about how things went. First of all, four yards, the tension is still the same. So if you look over here at the cardboard, I'm almost done. This is that roll of a very thin corrugated cardboard that I used. It worked throughout the weaving. Tension is still the same, which is very nice. The other thing that I've discovered was that people were asking about how, if you can put on a really long warp. Well, what I find, I'm gonna sit down here and do a little bit of weaving, or we'll show you a little bit of something going on here. What I discovered is this, the back diameter, like I said, gets pretty thick if you, the more yarn you put on. And what I'm finding is that as you weave, the shed actually becomes larger both directions as the roll goes down. So for example, right now, and I did put the uh, rigid heddle further up. I can also set this particular loom, you can move and put it back there, but I moved it up here just to get a feel for it. So right now it's on the bottom and I don't need the stick that I had earlier. I also was able to get these shuttles nice and thin made by the handy woman. And I can take that through, just tug it like I was doing a little bit, push this forward. And then on the other one, as I go up, the shed there is a little bit smaller, but what I'm finding is the tension is so not good, very good that I don't need to put a stick in there like I showed earlier, but I just wanted to get that, uh, show that to you folks. So I'm gonna go back the other way and again, go the other way. So these are really nice. I like these shuttles. And the other one I had, the damask one made by Leclerc. And I'm sure there's other ones out there. This is a nice wide opening for your yarn to come through. I'm gonna do one more the other direction. And again, pushing it forward. And nice to know that the tension is even. I'm going to finish this and then you know, basically pause for a moment, finish weaving, and then we will unroll the yarn or the uh, fabric that's on here. So here we are, I ran out of yarn for the weft. I could have kept weaving a little bit farther, but again, I ran out of yarn. So at the moment, I'm ready to cut it off and to check out how much fabric we have. I'm gonna go over and if I wanted to use all of this for fringe for some reason, I could literally take with this one, I could take the stick out and then I would have to then untie all of each one of these knots. In this situation, I'm not going to use it as fringe. So we're going to cut these off so I can get it through the heddle. But again, if you wanted to weave all the way up as close as you can to the end, that would be great. Then you'd have some nice long fringe if this was a scarf or maybe a table runner that you wanted to have some nice uh, fringe on. So in this case, I'm finished with this. We'll take that out. I've already taken the, I've already, I'm gonna slide this up in this here so we can watch as the fabric comes off. I've already unhooked that. So let's see what we have here. I'm gonna roll it like this. I do have some ends to trim. And what I'll be doing is machine washing and drying all of this. I'll take it to my, I have a serger, so I'll serge off the ends. If you don't have a serger, you could also just use a zigzag stitch in your machine. Then take your fabric, put it in the washing machine dryer, then cut it up to make cable runners or placemats. So I'm very happy with the outcome right now, and I hope you've given this a try or will give it a try. Thanks for watching.